All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. Up Jarvis Kingston. I hope y'all staying strong in these times that we're in. I hope that y'all again, y'all going through it day by day and that y'all staying strong and, you know, you're going through each problem or obstacle that you're facing. I hope that you find more comfort and peace in your situation. I hope that your relationship with God is getting much better and closer. I pray that things are turning around for the better in your direction. I pray that things go more smoothly for you from now on. Things be a little too rough or stagnant or slow or bumpy for you, but I pray that things flow more smoothly in your life. Now, today's message I want to discuss about God works in mysterious ways, and life is a big mystery itself. You know, we always go through life with a whole lot of questions that's not answered. Sometimes we question, you know, the most high. Sometimes we question why things are the way they are. We question why the system's the way it is. We question why our personalities are the way they are. We question why we dealt with certain experiences that we had. You know, a lot of us question our own motives or other people's motives. We question what may happen the next day, what may happen the next week, what may happen the next month, what may happen the next year or my time from now. You know, we have all these questions and worries and we so antsy and have so much anxiety about so much things. But see, the thing about life, we're not meant to figure every single thing out. If we sit down and really try to ponder and wonder on why everything is the way it is, we would drive ourselves crazy. See, the thing is, is that God works in mysterious ways. His ways is higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He's very unpredictable. He's very spontaneous. He's random. Um, he just goes about things the way he does. And for us on our part, we have to just kind of move in the spirit and just kind of be watchful and diligent and vigilant and catch on to it. It's not really on us to have every single detail and every single answer, but it is on us to be aware and watchful of everything going on in the world, everything going on in our personal lives, and just seeing the signs and wonders that God is displaying, you know. And our life is a mystery. Sometimes we question, why are we born in this generation? Why are we here the way we are? What's my purpose? Or uh, what was I put on earth to really do? We have all these different questions. And down the road, I feel like we'll have our revelation and answer for it later. We'll end up having our clarity later sometimes. But in the meantime, a lot of things are still a mystery towards us. You know, don't think that you're stupid or slow or don't think of it like that. You know, a lot of things really go beyond our understanding. A lot of things way do a lot of things do go way beyond our thinking scales, you know, because a lot of us sometimes we get prideful and we have this know it all spirit. But we really don't know nothing. You know, a lot of cases, we just know what we know from our personal experiences or research or whatever school education you have, but that's limited. There's still a whole lot of encounters that we still haven't had yet. There's still a lot of experiences that we still haven't had yet, you know, and life is a journey. Life is a mystery. Okay, you're not going to get all the answers and clarity up front. You're not going to get it away till later down the road. That's just how life is. Sometimes things aren't revealed to us until a definitely a certain time point, you know, so. You know, I just want to uh, read some scriptures about how mysterious God is and how he created everything. I want to also read some scriptures about, you know, just life in general. You know what I mean? Because you ever just have a mystery of how the earth is made and how the animals are the way they are. You ever wonder, have a mystery about the way this whole earth was built and this creation and the way we're existing in it, you know what I mean? And what goes beyond it, right? There's so much mystery to everything. So I'm just going to read some scriptures about this and just go from there. All right. The book of Job, chapter 11, verse 7. Can you, dis can you discover the depths of God? Can you discover the limits of the Almighty? All right. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 28. However, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the latter days. This was your dream and the visions in your mind while on your bed. The book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 9. O Belshazzar, chief of the, the, chief, the chief of the magicians, since I know a spirit of the holy gods is in you and you, no mystery baffles you, tell me the visions of my dream which I have seen, along with this interpretation. The book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 18. This is the dream which I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belshazzar, tell me his interpreta interpretation. 
And as much as none of the wise men of my kingdom is able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able for a spirit of the holy gods is in you. The book of Amos chapter three, verse seven. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. The book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Jesus answered them to you. It has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. The book of Mark chapter four, verse 11. And he was saying to them, to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, they get everything in parables. Now, let's see the book of Luke chapter eight, verse 10. And he said to you, it has been granted on the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest, it is in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. The book of Ephesians chapter three, verse nine, and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery, which for ages has been hidden in the God, hidden in God who created all things. The book of Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which has been kept secret for long ages past. The book of first Corinthians chapter two, verse seven. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 26. That is the mystery which has been hidden from the past ages and generations, but has now been manifested to his saints. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his, his kind attention which he purposed in him. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 4. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 2, that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in the true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, by common confession, great is the mystery of godliness. He who has revealed in the flesh was invicted was vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. The book of Ephesians chapter three, verse six, to be specific, the Gentiles, that the Gentiles are fellow hearers and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The book of Romans chapter 11, verse 25, for I do not want you brethren to be uninformed of this mystery so that you will not be wise in your own estimation. That a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, To whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9 through 10, He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his kind intention which he purposed, in him, he proposed in him with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times. That is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth in him. The book of first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised and perishable. And we will be changed for this perishable must put on the imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality. The book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse seven. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished as he preached to his servants, the prophets. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse five through eight. And on her forehead, a name was written, a mystery, Babylon, the great the mother of harlots and of abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered greatly. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the 10 horns. The beast you saw was, and is not, and is about to become up out of the abyss and go to destruction. And those who dwell on the earth, whose name has not been written on the book of life from the foundation of the world, will wonder from will wonder when they see the beast that he was and is not yet to come and will come the book of ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 through 9 to me the very least of all saints this grace was given 
to preach to the Gentiles then for the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery for which ages has been hidden in God who created all things. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 4 through 6 by referring to this when you read you can understand my insight to the mystery of Christ which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit to be specific that the Gentiles are fellow hearers and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19 and pray on my behalf that the utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 25 through 27 of this church I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit so that I may fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. That is the mystery which has been hidden from the past ages and generations, but has now been manifested to his saints, to whom God will to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among you, the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 3, praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up to us a door for the word, so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned. The book of Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all knowledge and I, and I have faith, so that's to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For one who speaks in the tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands, but in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31 through 32. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I speak with reference to Christ and the church. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever, that we may observe all the words of this law. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 33 through 36. Oh, the death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The book of Romans chapter 9 verse 11 through 23. For though the twins were not yet born and had not done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose according to his choice would stand, not because of works, but because of him who calls. It was said to her, the older will serve the younger. Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? There is no justice with God, is there? May it never be, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it does not depend on the man who wills for the man, or who runs, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who resists his will? On the contrary, who are you? O oh man, who answers back to God? The thing molded will not say to the molder, why did you make me like this? Will it, or does not the potter have a right over the clay? To make from the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for common use. What if God, although willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? And he did so to make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory. The book of First Peter chapter 1 verse 10 through 12. As to, his, as to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful searches and inquiries, seeking to know what person or time the spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, 
But you and these things which now have been been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things into which angels long to look. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 29 through 30. For those who for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. The book of First Timothy chapter 3, verse 9. But holding to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. The book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4 through 9. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was made was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit. To be specific, the Gentiles who are fellow hearers and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. The book of Revelations, chapter 17, verse 5 through 7. No, I already read that one, my bad. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. Now, let's see here. The book of Psalm 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will make them know his covenant. So there you have it throughout the Old and New Testament. You see how the mystery of God, the mystery of how this world was created, the mystery of how Christ was um, made to do his will for all of us, the mystery of the gospel. You see, life is a big mystery. Spiritually, mentally, physically, everything is a mystery. A lot of things go beyond our understanding, and a lot of things are just sometimes too advanced to really detail. You know what I mean? But that's why we have to pray to God for wisdom, and we have to humble ourselves and always be willing to learn and listen and to be watchful and vigilant and watch the wonders and signs that God gives us because um, there's a reason behind everything, you know. And we have to remember that God does work in mysterious ways. His son works in mysterious ways as well. And this whole world is a mystery, you know. Just think about it, all these people, all these languages, all these cultures. It's a whole mystery, you know. It's really crazy when you try to think about how everything was created and how it's all separated and displayed right in front of us, right? So just wanted to throw that out there, that God works in mysterious ways, and our whole, our whole life is a mystery. And there's so much answers that we still have to figure out to this day, right? So I just want to remind y'all how great he is and his son is. He is the Adam, the advocate, the almighty, the alpha and omega, the amen, the apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessed and only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, Christ of God, the constellation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, the faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the firstborn from the dead, firstborn over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the hero of all things, the high priest, the holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, king of Israel, king of kings and Lord of lords, the king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the light of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yeshua, Ahiah, Yeshaya, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, 
of our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice, the Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone to build his rejection. The true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the truth, the way, the truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We serve an awesome creator and his son is awesome as well. I pray to God that whoever this is, I pray that you get baptized. You start your life over for the Lord. I pray that you start to get more clarity, understanding of the most high. I pray that you get more wisdom. I pray that you start to answer, you start to get all the answers to your life. I pray that you stop walking around confused. I pray that you walk around with better intuition, with better understanding. I pray that you don't lean on your own understanding. I pray that you're more willing to learn. I pray that you get out of your own way. I pray that you stop being stubborn. And I hope you keep getting through these days out here. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.